This was our lab's efforts to look at the effect of stereoscopic display crosstalk on simulated remote vision system depth discrimination. Uh, standard disclosure information, but we would like to thank the LCMC for their support of this research. Um, so I'm sure most of you know that in military and um, industry, stereoscopic remote vision system or RVS technology has increased and become greatly popular over the recent years, specifically in air refueling, telesurgery, and bomb disactivation and disposal. Uh, so in order to properly evaluate these systems, we need to make sure they're safe to use, uh, that performance still remains high, and that visual fatigue is reduced over long time periods. And in order to evaluate them, we also have to look, make sure we look at depth perception, because to do these tasks, accurate depth perception is critical. So while stereo displays do allow us to see 3D on a 2D screen, there are still a lot of artifacts present in these displays. Crosstalk is one of these um, artifacts, and it is due to incomplete separation of the images that are supposed to go completely separately to the two eyes. Perceptually, what this results in is called ghosting, and if you can see it um, here on the edges of this aircraft, in the circles, it looks a little bit like an image doubling. So a lot of previous research has been done on crosstalk and its detriments to looking at a stereo image, including uh, evaluations of image quality, uh, fatigue and discomfort, and depth magnitude estimation. So looking specifically at discomfort and fatigue, as crosstalk increases, discomfort and fatigue increases. Here, most authors recommend that you stay at or under 5% crosstalk. 5% uh, by Koi and Tuet, Chen and colleagues 5.8. Nigerian colleagues found a limit of between 5 and 10%. And Paula and colleagues, uh, they looked specifically at workload on the NASA task load index and found that workload increased by 14% at 5% crosstalk. Looking at stereoscopic image quality ratings as crosstalk increases, these ratings decrease. Here the recommendations are a bit more variable. Uh, so on the low end, it's recommended to stay under 2 to 5% crosstalk. Huang and colleagues looked at system crosstalk, which takes image contrast into account. They recommend staying under 10% system crosstalk. And Wilcox and Stewart recommend uh, staying under 10% to avoid any reduction in image quality. Depth magnitude estimation accuracy um, also decreases with increasing crosstalk. So uh, Pala and colleagues found that at 5% crosstalk, depth, depth magnitude estimation accuracy drops at 8%. And uh, Serlin, Allison and Wilcox have done a ton of great research on this uh, subject. They found that um, at 4% levels of crosstalk are lower, uh, you start to see a reduction in estimation accuracy for both individual stimuli that you may use in a lab uh, or natural scene stimuli, that crosstalk affects thin stimuli more than thick, and that uh, not only does crosstalk affect estimations made from binocular disparity cues, but monocular disparity cues as well. Oh. So um, we wanted to look specifically at depth discrimination accuracy, as, and we had trouble finding any uh, papers out there that look specifically at discrimination. Why discrimination? We um, we're specifically interested in aerial refueling operators. And so when they use the remote vision systems uh, to perform aerial refueling, what they're interested in is discrimination right before that boom is uh, close to the receptacle, right? So they're trying to get the long boom into the receiving aircraft receptacle in order to refuel the aircraft. So depth discrimination, whether they can tell there's depth there or not, is critical for these AROs uh, in order to avoid long refueling times, which is bad, the receiver aircraft is low on fuel, 
and to avoid uh, any damage on the receiver aircraft. So the purpose of our experiment was to look at depth discrimination thresholds with increasing crosstalk. We wanted to do this on a hyperstereoscopic display in order to emulate the system that these AROs use. Um, the, what we used to do this is we had a monitor and the participant eye height stayed the same while the monitor moved. And so that was to emulate the user of the system moving above or below the design eye point. Which is important because uh, while crosstalk on most displays remains quite low at the design eye point, it can increase um, towards screen edges. It can increase with head roll, and it can increase with increased viewing angle, uh, which is what we are emulating. So you can see we um, the images down here. Uh, just so you're not confused, the post-it notes were just helping us uh, line up some of our measurements. Um, but here in the center image, you have someone at the design eye point of the display. Here on the left, you have someone who's moved their eyes below the design eye point. And here they move their eyes above the design eye point. And the white on the screen is 50% uh, or more crosstalk. So you can see that crosstalk increases uh, in the opposite direction of the user movement. Our participants, um, we had 11 participants, 22 to 60 years, median age of 33. Try and keep it young like the boom operators and um, they just came from our uh, local area in Dayton. The RVS display, so in order to emulate that, we used a ViewSonic passive stereoscopic flat panel display. Um, it is a pattern micropolarizer, micropolarizer, which is a bit out of use these days, um, but it is similar to ones used on the aircrafts. Um, passive circularly polarized 3D glasses, um, and again, unfortunately, they cut our peak white luminance down um, to 41.7. Our viewing distance, we kept at 33 inches, um, and then so these were our horizontal and vertical field of views. Uh, so before we started our depth discrimination measurements, we uh, characterized crosstalk across our display. We did this using a chromometer with a one, discrete, one degree spot size, so you can see our setup right here. Um, we took this at five viewing distances, five vertical positions where the chromometer was held straight at the display, and five vertical positions of the photometer where it was directed to the center of the display, and that was emulating uh, those different viewpoints. The measurements were taken using three separate test patterns. The white image presented to right eye while black was presented to the left, vice versa, and black image presented to each eye. And just, uh, we did the standard Wiseman and Woods uh, equations. Uh, for each eye, we did put the um, stereo glasses over the chromometer, and then uh, averaged across both eye views for our final calculations. So we ended up with a multi-dimensional mathematical model that fit, again, those viewing distances, heights of the screen, and uh, viewing angles. So here we have just a, a couple, it is 3D, but it's easier to slice on the display on the screen. Uh, so here, vertical head position was fixed, and crosstalk is defined as function of viewing distance, and vertical position on the display. So you can see crosstalk increases both with viewing distance and vertical position on the display as you move away from the center. On the bottom here, the viewing distance is fixed at 33 inches, and crosstalk is defined as a function of vertical position of the head and vertical position on the display. And here we find that you get your lowest uh, crosstalk when the user is uh, 1.9 inches above the center of the display. However, for our current experiment, because we had a fixed viewing distance and the stimuli were always shown in the center of the screen, we were able to collapse the 3D model into a 1D model, shown here, where crosstalk is defined as a function of the height of the display relative to the user's eyes. We took these measurements quite a while ago, so um, Right before we did the experiment, we took a, took a few points um, 
and remeasured crosstalk just to make sure there was no screen drift. So that's what you see on the graph. Uh, as there was no drift, we went ahead and used this equation for our experiment. So for our actual depth discrimination measurements, we used a 3D virtual environment uh, generated thanks to X-Plane. Uh, here you can see our image of the Seattle-Tacoma Airport area. And again, our hyper-stereo uh, configuration was similar to those used in air refueling systems. Uh, so here's our lovely lab manager demonstrating our setup. Uh, we did use a motorized table to move the display, and it had an accuracy 2.1 inches. Um, we did keep our participants at a fixed height and just moved the table. Uh, this was easier than moving the participant for every different uh, height. Uh, we did start with a same head uh, chin height for every participant. We were getting weird results, and then we realized that Fixed chin height doesn't equal fixed eye height. <laughs> so for each participant, we made sure to adjust the chin rest so their eye height was always the same. Uh, so I already went over this in the last talk. <laughs> we uh, used our dual ring task uh, for this. And uh, the outer ring was always at the camera convergence distance of 9.7 meters. So when crosstalk um, did occur, the outer or reference rings, you never got a double image. Uh, you did on the inner, uh, on the inner rings. Uh, we took about 30 threshold measurements for participant, range of table heights, and we took about, we tried to take three measurements at each table height. Uh, here again, the display and the contrast of our rings against the uh, sky was 1.9. Okay, results. So here we just show table height and uh, depth discrimination threshold. Um, one, one participant was excluded from analysis as their uh, means were 25 times <laughs> the rest of the participants. Um, again, three measurements per table height, so we just took the median for our analysis. And we found that for our four highest table heights, um, the threshold was 1.26 centimeters with the effect of participant removed, which equates to about two arc seconds. Uh, so again, with the hyper stereo, you are getting quite uh, great, uh, great stereo acuity measurements here. Okay, so actually fitting, uh, changing the table height into crosstalk using that uh, model that I showed you earlier and again, this is depth discrimination threshold. Uh, so we did find, as expected, that as crosstalk increases, depth discrimination threshold increases. And we got it quite a good fit at a um, uh, highly significant fit. Um, so if we looked at our four lowest uh, crosstalk levels, which is 2.5 and lower, we found no significant difference in depth discrimination thresholds at these crosstalk levels. Uh, however, we did find a significant difference between the th uh, threshold at 5% crosstalk and 2.5. So what we did is we took the pooled standard deviation of these four lowest levels, fed it into our regression equation, and found that depth discrimination thresholds were uh, significant at four point significantly different at 4.5% crosstalk. At 4.5% crosstalk, um, the depth discrimination was two centimeters instead of that 1.26, which is 59% higher. And then uh, just for information, uh, we found that the depth discrimination thresholds doubled at 6% crosstalk and increased five times at only 14% crosstalk. So again, you can see that uh, the effect is exponential. Um, again, depth discrimination thresholds increased with crosstalk, significant increase at 4.5. Um, this was very nicely in agreement with those earlier papers that I showed. So again, the research by uh, Serlin, Allison, and um, Wilcox, <laughs> sorry, 
Um, so they recommend crosswalk no higher than 4%. Um, that agrees greatly with that. And again, the studies that found looked at discomfort and fatigue around 5%, um, it agrees with that nicely too. So we're recommending that uh, across the display, the crosstalk be no greater than 4.5%, but if you can't manage that across the whole display, that at least you go no higher than that in the defined head box. And uh, while crosstalk should try and uh, be made as small as possible, no greater than 4.5 if you want to avoid any impairment in depth discrimination. Let's see. References, uh, this is recorded so you guys can see these later if you're interested. And that is it. <laughs>